Hey guys, so I'm working on this circuit for another project for another video here But this video is about something that I discovered that my scope can do that I thought was pretty cool So let's get started Here is the ESP8266 and uh, it's just hooked up to to be powered by a uh, 3.7 uh, LiPo battery so that's actually driving it directly there is no voltage regulator I'm living dangerously but it seems to work okay and there's really no other circuit in here other than the uh, pull-up resistors I have two pull-up resistors over here Whoa, focus issue sorry about that guys so I have two pull-up resistors pulling up GPIO 2 and GPIO 0 and then there's uh, two more resistors there for level shifting that is used by this is, which is uh, the FTDI which I actually unplugged to make sure that it's not affecting the, the actual test so and then the, the scope probe are connected to various points within the ESP module itself and like I said there's no other circuit no transistors no MOSFET no other chips it's just the ESP itself Here's how, how I set up my channels. I got four channels in this scope. On channel one, I hook up to GPIO zero of the ESP. And, oh, I, I'll show you how I set up these uh, labels. I thought it was pretty cool that this scope could actually have custom labels. I'll show that at the, at the end of the video. And uh, on channel two, I hook it up to GPIO two. And that GPIO two, uh, as you remember, is the pin that the ESP uses when it boots up. If, it, if that pin is low, it will uh, wait for the uh, new firmware. So that one, uh, I get, actually I have both of these with a pull-up resistor, so it will not try to do the firmware update. And then on channel 3, I have the VCC, just to show you that you know there's a little fluctuation on the uh, power when you first turn it on, but not too much. Um, and then finally on channel 4, I have the TX. And that's where it's going to get interesting how this TX and these channels interact with each other. So let me center these again. They're at uh, one volt per division. So each of these divisions, so that's one volt, two, three, four volts. I'm going to put the GPIO and the TX all centered on the zero line. So scope also has this really nice button here. So if you press it like that, it will just center it in there. So you don't have to actually know try to center it by hand it's like oh where is the zero that's really nice to be able to just center that by pressing that button okay channel 3 VCC I'm not I'm not gonna put in there just uh, on channel on VCC, the VCC I'm actually going to bring down to uh, negative 4 such that when the, when I powered it up it will just show um, about four volts I think it's like three point something up here so everything is in there the channels are kind of like on top of each other that's why you can't see them and um, I'm going to let it run it's in roll mode now so as the time goes on it just keeps on going that way it is at 200 milliseconds so each of these division horizontal division is 200 millisecond and let's get started I'm gonna turn on the the power you'll see a spike and so the, bo the bottom one here, as I said, is the power, the VCC up here. And up there, as you can see, everything is high. There's some little signal up there, but it's not really that significant. I think it's probably like about half a volt, because this is one, two, three. So it's, everything is like at, at high four volts. So, but what is interesting is the relationship between some of these signals. I'm going to do it one more time, and I'm, I'm going to stop it step right there we'll slide over so we can magnify it so we're zooming in to 10 millisecond I think it's pretty amazing that the scope can do this um, so we're zooming in I wonder if that's probably good enough as you can see I'll just keep on zooming in and show you that basically there is probably nothing there it's just noise but further back here, earlier, right after it's got turned on, there is actually some signal here. So the, the 
these lines here you could tell see that's beginning to you could see that these are actual digital signal going up and down and oops <laughs> sorry so that's interesting but what is what I found um, that I that actually helped my problem is the fact that there, one of these things is not what I expected so the TX which is channel 4 I believe I'm gonna move that TX down so the signal looked like that right but what is also interesting on channel 2 which should be not doing anything because I don't have any uh, code in on this ESP it's completely blank it should just be either high or low but it actually is following the TX and when I put in some code in there it's doing this as I turn it on and then it does what the program does and so kind of like there's a, like a boot up sequence or something going on uh, when the ESP is just turned on and that is what's causing the issue for my uh, project because in my, what I want to do with my project is I want to do an auto shut off ESP so I would turn it on it will do something and then when it's done it will auto shut off and I use a MOSFET to basically control the power that goes to the ESP uh, I could pay show a little bit of that <clears throat> So as you can see, I have the ESP over here, I have the GPIOs pulled up high, and uh, what I want to do is control the power to the ESP using this MOSFET. And what I found is if I replace this MOSFET with an LED or something, or even an Arduino, the whole thing works just fine. I would press that button, it powers the, the MOSFET, the MOSFET will power the Arduino or the LED, and then it will do whatever, and then when it's done, uh, oh, I forgot to say that. Basically, the GPIO from the Arduino will go from here to here. So when it first turns on, the Arduino will set that uh, pin to high. And so when I release this, it will still this is still high. So the power is still on. And then when I when it's done, I will turn this off. So that will bring it off because I'm no longer pressing the button. And this will turn this off, and the Arduino will shut off, and there's no power. And the whole thing works fine with the Arduino or an LED but when I put this guy it doesn't work and as you saw earlier that the reason why I believe is because this GPIO is doing that really fluctuations there so it's not really high immediately when you first turn it on and so I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do about that but I thought it was cool that I was able to figure it out using my scope so thanks for watching guys bye bye I'm still learning all kinds of stuff about the scope here but one of the things I learned recently is uh, how to make uh, custom labels so you to do that you just pick the channel you want to customize so I pick channel 1 and then in addition to all these modes here you could also go press the up and down and there will be more menus <laughs> for these buttons here so these buttons will serve other functions and one of those new functions is a label you press label and you could have the custom label on, on or off you could see that over here so that's off that's on and then you can also edit them so there's a little no keyboard so that kind of suck but you know you could type whatever you want using these uh, uh oops that's not a button using these right here so let me delete them and you could say i don't know it's up to four letters that's all you have you know, you, you you have is just four letters so and then you just type that in and then when you're done you say OK and now it's a B so you do that for every channel and then uh, you could turn it on and off and I find it really helpful because then you could actually see uh, the meaning of that instead of it's like just channel 1 you actually say oh that's GPIO 2 on that's the TX line so I thought it was pretty cool so I'm sure I'll find more uh, I'll, I'll be learning more about my scope um, if you guys are interested in things like this, please subscribe. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.